Hi guys, welcome back to Weaver Sun Custom. Uh, we're here at Shot Show, and uh, it's very fitting that it's called Shot Show because my voice is just about shot from uh, all the people that I've talked to uh, in the last couple of days. But I am here at the Tops Knives booth, and uh, they have some really cool new offerings that uh, we're going to be running down here really soon. I'm not an expert on these knives, so I'm going to turn it over to someone that is, and uh, yeah. Uh, some very good quality knives and we will see what we got. All right, so as promised, here's our resident guru, or at least the sacrificial lamb, that uh, they threw upon the altar of Topps Knives here. Uh, Craig is going to take you through and uh, show you some really cool stuff. Yeah. So there you go, Craig. It's all you, brother. Yeah. So welcome to our booth. We are, this is Topps Knives, obviously. We're made in the USA, up in Idaho Falls, Idaho. We've been doing this for 25 years now, um, and every year at SHOT Show, one of our favorite things is to debut new stuff, show off ideas, concepts, see what people are interested in. This year's kind of, I guess what everybody's talking about and what we're, we're trying to figure out is miniatures. Is there a reason not to do them? Because everybody's digging them. So we brought up, there's three models that we have that are very popular full-size knives that we made miniature versions of. <laughs> we weren't even gonna do it, but about a week and a half ago, the boss man was like, no, nah, we're doing it. And we busted out three of these just in time to bring them to the show. So El Chapo, the FMS, and El Chete are all based off of larger knives. Like, yeah. if you look at the El Chete, machete, of course. Yeah, it's clearly <laughs> like, a, it looks like it should be a machete. There's a cleaver. This is kind of a camp kitchen type knife, the Frog Market Special is. They're all, these are all shrunk about, they're about 60, they're about 40% of the full size. And so they're very small compared to the full size, but they are actual knives. So it's made of the same steel, same handle material, same blade finish. Um, everything is still a knife. Uh, what's cool about these is, for example, this one in particular, it's scaled down really nice. I don't think we need to make any changes. I would have no problem putting this in a sheath, tossing it in my pocket, and just carrying it kind of every day. It's, uh, it's, it's really cool. These other two, I think obviously probably need a couple of changes to make them kind of EDC friendly or, or something that you might carry around on a daily basis. A Boy Scout's first machete. There you go. <laughs> there, you, there you go. But I mean, when, when, when I say mini, we're talking about, that's mm -hmm. like still probably about five and a half inches on the blade length. You know, so we're, we're calling this a mini, but next to some of our other knives, it's like still as big. Right, um, right. It's not a miniature knife, but it's a miniature machete. Exactly. So, exactly. I, so, I get you. Cool concept. They're really cool. They're fun. Um, everybody's having a good time talking about them. We just got to decide, do we do it for real? And if so, how? Um, but yeah, so that's what's going on with those. We've got also a couple of uh, a couple of tactical knives that are in the lineup this year. This one is uh, was designed by a couple of guys that run a, a page called Tier 1 EDC. They do a bunch of gear reviews, they do all sorts of stuff like that. And uh, they've branched out into making some of their own stuff. So uh, DC Blade Works and I think Old Squirrel Knives is the other one. And they are, they've made a couple of uh, reverse edge or fruit type knives, you know, Hawkbill Blade, uh, very concealed carry tactical style. This one, when they sent it to us, they sent it with a different knife. And they set this as drawing as like, a, like maybe you guys might want to do this. Maybe this is something, you know, they hadn't even prototyped it yet. And the more we looked at it, the more we were like, this is actually really cool. Yeah, it's kind of wicked. It is very wicked looking. Well, it's, so it's a strange looking blade, but how it, once you put this in your hand and you close your fist on that, it just, man, it just fits really And honestly, nice. the way it's configured, the jumping, the jumping right there in front of the uh, scales looks out of place until you actually grip it like you are right now yeah. and you see, so okay, you yeah, it's on. actually laid out yeah, just so about if, perfect. If you're doing slashing cuts, you're going to get a lot of force behind that, right. the blades in front of you. There's some, there's some angle to this that's going to make it very brutal. Right. For that kind of uh, for that kind of cutting task, and if, if you could grip it again, you know, just normal, and see, one of the things that when as soon as you actually got your real grip on it, uh, one of the things that really caught me is not only do you have that aggressive jumping there, that in just the right spot, 
but right on the other side you can see that choil just kind of locks the rest of your hand in yeah this so. thing this thing it fits so well the reverse grip is actually very similar as soon as you lock it in it just feels like this right. is where it should be um so cool looking knife it's got uh, like i say it's got it's got a weird kind of straight blade and then it curves into the rest of it that in a slashing cut is going to be just it's like a raptor claw on steroids nasty. yeah that the, the tip is great for stabbing um i see this being a very interesting knife for people to to give a try and, and mess around with it's going to be a it's going to be a lot of fun so that one's cool yeah. the other tactical knife we have is actually not a new design it's uh it's an older one this was designed by a guy named Bram Frank. He is uh, one of the old school Filipino martial arts guys in the kind of in the military community. It's right. called the Abanico. It used to be made by Ontario many years ago. He's got a couple of folding versions of this knife. He's got there's some custom fixed blades of this that have been made over the years. Um, but this was made more as like a offense kind of knife not so much self-defense but more right. like offense and what really grabs me is the the design of the blade it's almost like a tanto and a clip point had a baby yeah um, yeah i'm not even sure what 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 do you guys how do you guys describe that particular um, i mean me, profile me i would more call this i would call it more like a clip point it does it does travel up a little bit the the, uh, the upper swedge on this can be sharpened so it can be double edged if need be. Um, I mean, it was made for stabbing and slashing. No, and, you can uh, tell it's all business. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. So, very cool knife. Uh, Bram was was an acquaintance of the original owner of Tops, uh, Mike Fuller. He was in the uh, he was in the army. He was Green Beret. Served in intelligence. Uh, he did. You know, he did a lot of stuff. So Bram and him they came from a similar world and they, they, they understood each other quite a bit and so um, Mike passed away a few years ago and, and Bram has been trying to kind of say hey you know what like I want to I want to bring this back kind of because I knew Mike and I I, I don't want to take it somewhere else he kept he, he keeps telling us like I could approach other companies but I just don't want to <laughs> and so uh, so yeah we're, we're pretty happy to be bringing this one back it's a black G10 handle black powder coat 1095 high carbon steel so if you know tops you know that this this is going to be our bread and butter this is what we do all day every day so it's going to be done right yep. if you're a citizen of chicago you should probably have one of these right <laughs> probably well, i mean if you're going to go get a loaf of bread or something you want to be prepared yeah yeah if you're no, that, your house <laughs> no that's nice that's you can yeah. tell that's all business yeah yeah so um I mean, we've got plenty of others. Do you want me to show you want me to show them all? What else do you want to see? You can show me whatever you want to, brother. Okay. Let's uh, we'll round it off with, a, with two more, and I'm, and I'm excited about both of them. One of them is this guy. We don't have a name for it yet, but it is, I mean, if this were larger, it'd be a bone knife, right? I mean, it's, right. it clearly looks like it's made for fish, meat, uh, you know, any kind, of, any kind of like kitchen food type prep and uh, possibly people as well so what's cool about that is just you know it's not it's not a full-size boning knife but this thing uh, like for and me at, at, at that size i can see it doing double duty as a uh, get off me knife exactly for me i see this as as an edc knife that can be used for self-defense i see it being used on food um, yep. me personally it'll be in a pocket sheath in my you know in my pocket I'm, i right. wouldn't even wear it on a belt it'd just be there handy nobody right. will ever know until they need to um, right. but great looking blade super super comfortable handle thin steel so it'll be nice and slicey for food prep or things like that um, this one's got a tan g10 handle on it the black g10 liner um, just a slick slick looking blade and now I don't know if you I, I can't remember if I, I might have not heard it if you did go over it but uh, I'm assuming most of the, um, on most of these models, the steel's probably D2. Is that um, is that 10, fair to say? 1095 is the steel we use most. Okay. Um, so it's a, like compared to D2, D2 has some some chromium in it. It has some other stuff. It's uh, it's great steel. We're more familiar with 1095. Our heat treat on 1095 is dialed in to the point where like you're gonna have a hard time finding a better 1095 blade anywhere else. 
Um, but the main very important thing is, is you're not using anything that has CRs and you're not using 8CR13 yep. or you know MOV yes. crap. Yeah, we're, uh, um, you're not doing gas station knives, and people need yeah. to understand that. Exactly. Um, we make stuff in the they, U.S. These are for hard use. And yeah, we make stuff in the U.S. and we use U.S. materials. Right. Um, so that's that's what we do. Um, yeah. So 1095, great steel, not stainless. That's why we have a lot of Cerakote finishes and a lot of powder coat finishes. Right. Right. Yep. And if anybody remembers the movie Punisher Warzone, I believe one of your most badass designs, I think, was. Uh, Featured in that prominently, was it not? Absolutely, absolutely. The M4X yeah. Punisher. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and very underrated movie, I think. Yeah. So yeah. good movie, definitely. But good uh, movie. but but the knife really stole the show. It's it a badass <laughs> design. Absolutely. But uh, right on. As yeah, I don't know what. Oh, here's a. Uh, I almost forgot. There was a question that I had on the uh, the miniatures in particular, yep. but across the the lineup. Um, what kind of uh, sheaths are we looking at? Are we looking at predominantly leather, kydex, a mixture, or we do um, we do more kydex probably than anything else. We do some nylon sheaths, we do some leather sheaths, but more more kydex. Um, the leather sheaths that we do, they are very well done. They're they're all double stitched. They're all they all have welts. Everything's great on those. Our kydex sheaths are also great, and we get better every year at, at producing those and making a sheath that, that fits the knife that it's going with. Um, but yeah, predominantly kydex. Awesome. Yeah. I kind of figured that, but you know, that's the kind of questions I get hit with after I post these videos. Yeah, and yeah. So if I don't ask it now, then I'm gonna have to reach out later on. And go, uh, yeah. So what's the deal with this? But uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, they have a lot of. Uh, wicked and sometimes unusual blade shapes and configurations and everything but the uh, one thing you can be rest assured correct me if I'm wrong Craig but the one thing they can be rest assured with is that no matter how radical the, the blade looks or how the design is like this bad boy it's all business and they're made that way for a reason there is function behind the form it's not like you're buying a gas station knife that just looks cool if it happens to look cool it's like a byproduct it's it just kind of goes in conjunction with it's made the work first and then looks cool second absolutely is that fair is that a fair way to say that we don't we don't make knives for safe we don't make knives for for right. the look we make knives we make tools that's, you, you that's, make them for jarheads like no. me that can break anything exactly we make that's tools right and maybe not every knife is going to fit every person but we have a knife for almost every need out there so yes they're made to be used awesome awesome um any parting words anything else you want to go over or? uh no i just you know thanks for stopping by uh, it's always cool to have have new people and, and 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 old people and everybody in between at the booth checking out new things and, and uh, you know right. this, this is what we do it for so and, and we appreciate it. In case you can't tell, their booth. I've been waiting like eight hours or so <laughs> to, to actually get some time with Craig because the, their booth is a very popular one. It, it is jam packed like every minute that I've been out here, and uh, so that just goes. It kind of speaks to. Uh, the quality of the knives and the the assortment that they have. I, I shot a bunch of B-roll, so you'll see that it's not just this table. Although you can see there's a lot there, it's not just this table. They have so many different types. If you need a knife, they probably have you that whatever niche you need it for, they probably have you covered. So. Odds are that we got you covered. Absolutely. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. If you're looking for some good quality, not safe queen knives that look cool but also function, then definitely check out Top knife, uh, Tops Knives. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to give you Craig's personal phone number. So, uh, you know, you can call him up and just order any time of the night. Just, he'll be your direct line, okay? But uh, anyway, I'll get you inside. Until next time, watch your six and carry on. Wayward Sun out.